What's going on everybody, this is Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to show you a new tool called Virtual Grass by a company called Glitchy. They're also a sponsor in this video, so I wanted to thank them for that. And what does Virtual Grass allow you to do? Well, you can create very organic and natural interactions, either by using your hands with hand tracking or by using the controllers, or even by using a mouse because it allows you to test with that in the Unity Editor. I'm also gonna show you how you can go through the baking process. So we're gonna go before and apply some of the interactions before baking, and also looking at some of those interactions after the baking process. And you're gonna be surprised how amazing these poses look because everything that we're gonna be doing, it's going to be going into a service that they provide. And this service is all happening behind the scenes. The service downloads the information to Unity, and then in Unity, we're gonna be able to see some of the realistic interactions that they provide. So, let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. You're going to need Unity 2020 or Unity 2021. I'm using 2021. And then all you need is basically their package, which is gonna look like this. You're gonna get a Unity package from them. And then if you double click on it, you can import it into Unity and it's gonna put itself into third-party virtual graphs. And there is documentation in here and also a few examples that you can get going. Basically everything that you need, it's going to be included in this package. I already downloaded it, so you're gonna see it under third party, then virtual grass, and then all their examples here, their onboarding examples are included, including scripts, and then an onboarding scene that you can play with. This one that you see right here is the one that we're gonna be working from, and it's going to be available in GitHub. So the first thing that I also want you to look at, and this is gonna be project requirements for this video, is that you're gonna need the Exa rig. This is not required for virtual grass, but I want to use it because I want to be able to move a rig and also be able to move around if I want to use my controllers. I'm also including a teleporting in here. Basically when you push that button, it's going to change you to different stations. We'll start on this station here and then we'll move to that second station third station and then we're basically gonna loop through all these extensions so that we can play with different different objects. How do we get this set up? So the first thing that you're gonna need is you can create a game object and this game object can be called anything. I call my, my game object my virtual grass and then basically you can just add this component in here which is my virtual grass script. Once you have it added that's basically what it's going to allow you to communicate with the service and get some of your sensor information set up and then there's also another script in here that we won't have to add, but they have it available, which is gonna allow us to basically do the baking, their baking process. So one thing that I want to inform you is that the interactions that we're gonna be doing with the virtual grass component is not based on or used with the physics in Unity, meaning that everything that you do and interact, any object that you interact with is going to be by using the mesh information. So they are doing mesh calculations and when we're grabbing an object, that's basically all using the mesh data. It doesn't use the colliders or anything like that. So you can use colliders and you can use rigid body just basically to have those, you know, become useful in Unity. So if you want to throw a ball and then have the physics components basically create a realistic ball bouncing, then that's when you can use rigid body. But to be able to use our components, you don't need any of those components, any of the physics. You can basically just get, you know, a component completely baked and then you can start grabbing it and moving it around. But if you want that object to fall, then that's when you will add the physics. They have this component or, or this idea of using an auto setup. And what this allows you to do is you can create and, and set up multiple sensors or one sensor. When we're talking about a sensor, we're talking about basically an input, right? So hand tracking can be one of the sensors. So your hands are gonna be an input device. You can also use your mouse if you want to interact with the hand. So that's going to be a different type of sensor. And if we wanted to use the controllers on the Quest, that could be another type of sensor. So they have different sensors in here that you can use in auto setup. So if you want to use the controllers, you'll use a Unity XR. It's going to be for the Quest hand tracking, mouse. And if you want to use a Leap, basically for hand tracking as well, you can, you have that option as well. And you can extend these if you want to use different sensors. They have that information in the documentation. So basically the idea is that this is gonna be device agnostic. We can add different type of devices if we want to use the, their technology. So for now, we'll use the ones that they have available. So in this case, I have the Quest hand component and this is a sensor. So the model is gonna be the, the humanoid hand because I wanna use hand tracking. 
the skeletal mesh is going to be this component in here and this oculus rig is also available in their in the resources so you can just drag it and drop it so so far we'll have the virtual grass and also the oculus rig so if we get back in here you're going to have basically the the actual right hand which is going to be the skin mesh it's going to allow you to use both hands and then the sensor is going to be an external controller because we're getting the controller from the oculus quest 2 in my case and then the external, this is gonna be the Quest hand. Finger control type is gonna be full DOFS. So that's gonna allow you to basically capture the information from the fingers and then send that information to virtual grass. And then we're gonna be controlling the position rotation. These are just enabled by default. And then in my case, I'm gonna be using the, the actual XR rig, which I have. It's not a requirement for these, you know, for virtual grass, but it is a requirement for this project. And then the offset position is gonna be 000, rotation is gonna be 000 in this case. And then some of the different options in here are gonna be the trigger button. This is gonna be what button on the, in, in the case of the controller, we're gonna be using to basically con control and grab some of these items. In my case, I was using the trigger. So basically the trigger button on the controller is what's gonna allow us to grab the cans, to grab the water, the flashlight, and, and so on. And then you also have some global grass interaction settings that you can do if you want to use dynamic grass, hybrid, static grass, which I haven't really gone through. I just left this by default. Again, you can read that in the documentation. And then interaction type is gonna be trigger grass, junk grass. This is just how the objects are, go are going to interact with, basically when you grab them, what, how are they going to be attaching to the hand? So just go through some of those in the documentation as well. And then I just left some of these ones by default. If you want to throw an object, this is the velocity. If you want to change the angular velocity scale, you can also change this. And then also these two in here. So now the debug settings this is going to be very helpful for debugging purposes. So as we're grabbing some of these objects, we want to see additional information that we're going to be sending to the virtual grass service so a lot of times we might need to debug some of those and i'm going to show you how to do that as well and then these articulation stats is something that we're going to be also implementing in this video the first thing that i want to do is i want to start with setting up these flashlights so that we can we can actually grab them. so if i were to play the scene right now if i wanted to reach it right now i can't really do anything and the same thing with this other one right here. I can't really do anything because we haven't told the system to do so, right? What if we wanted to add interactions to those? So this is what you're going to do on your, on your objects. So the virtual grass components are gonna need mesh data. So any 3D object that you're going to be interacting with is gonna have to have the mesh with read and write access. So if we go in here and look at the flashlight, for example, there is a mesh filter and it has basically the mesh itself. This component in here, if we go to the actual object, you're gonna see that we have a bunch of different settings in here, but we also have the read and write for the mesh. So it's really important that you have that enabled because it's gonna allow the virtual grass algorithm to be able to read that mesh data and send that data to the service so that we can get information back, which is gonna go back down and put itself into a database, which I'm gonna show you as well. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and go back into the game object. So all we really need to do in here is we need to add a component. It's gonna be the components, all the components that they have in their system are going to be prefixed with VG for virtual grass underscore basically the implementation. So in this case, we're gonna be adding a virtual grass articulation, but I also wanna be able to collide with this. I wanna be able to have other objects to be able to collide with it. So I'm also going to be adding a mesh collider. And then if we want to also have this object basically fall with physics, I'm also going to be adding a rigid body. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this other flashlight. We're gonna go ahead and add the virtual. So let's do VG underscore articulation. And I'm also going to be adding the mesh collider. And we can also add the rigid body. Okay, so we have the hand trackings working. Let's see if I can grab this flashlight. And you can kind of see like it's going through everything, right? Like if I grab this, it's still, we can interact with it, but this doesn't feel realistic because I am doing a fist and it's going through the flashlight. In this case, I have fingers going through, which it looks pretty cool, but I can interact with everything. I can, you know, we have the colliders. If I were to drop them, physics are working just fine, but things are just, look at how everything just goes through. In the case of the other components, if we go back to the flashlight, we use what's called a VG articulation. And by default, it was floating, meaning that we're gonna be grabbing and it's going to, it's gonna be floating in the air. 
And then the interaction is going to be basically going to be grabbing it so it's graspable. So in the case of this one, I want this to be kind of like a, like a lever. So if you look at it right now, I just have a game object, which is going to be the parent. I also have an anchor and that, an that anchor is an invisible game object and basically has a Z axis going forward. And that's because I want, I want this lever to be able to go forward. Just if you were using, maybe like you were driving a car and you wanted to change gears, you can use you know, a lever like that, or maybe this will allow you to, to open a door. So that's what this anchor is going to do. It's going to tell us which direction we're going to be going. And then the cylinder itself is going to be the one that is going to be providing virtual grass with the mesh data. And then we also have a title in here so that I can show you that I'm doing Revolut. And that Revolut, it's going to come in and make more sense as soon as I show you. And then just basically a subtitle. So if we go back into the cylinder, all we need to do in this one is we're going to be adding VG underscore VG articulation. But in this case, I don't want to use a floating joint type. I'm basically going to change this to Revolu. And I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but Revolu, it's going to allow you to do basically anything kind of like in a circular manner. So in this case, we're going to be setting the degrees to, to 90 because I only want this to rotate 90 degrees forward. And it's going to be forward because of the anchor that I set pointing in the forward direction. You can also change the interaction in here. Remember, I had that when I didn't set the Revolu. So in this case, it's going to be down here. If I wanted to use my index to be able to push it, we can do that. Or if I want to just do a grasp, right? We want to grab it. That's going to be the graspable option. And then there's going to be different states. If you want, basically when I do this lever, if I push it all the way forward and I want it to bounce back, I can change it to be just bounce. If I want to do two stages, whether I maybe I do it half through and that's going to be one stage. And if I go all the way forward, that's going to be another stage. You can also set that and you can change the discrete states in here and you can add as many as you want in here. If you wanted to say maybe the first one is one, two and three, then you can do that. I'm just going to go ahead and undo that. Every single one of these objects has a VG articulation script associated. We're also going to be displaying the grab string. So when you grab an item, it depending on how much you grab it, say if you're like softly grabbing it, it's going to give you a value. If you're grabbing it, I think, I think if it attaches more as you're doing a grabs, the strain value is going to go up. So that just gives you additional information that they provide. Pretty simple. It's just going to say, okay, give me any object that we're grabbing. And then basically based on that, what is the selected object? It's going to be the transform. And then we're going to be looking for the text mesh pro and then basically just setting the grab strength. Okay. So if we go back into my virtual grass, there's going to be, that's where the script is going to be attached. This can be in its own game object. I happen to put it in this one because it's more of a global script. And so if we go back into my virtual grass and we get into the debug settings. So if you go in here and you click on save debug files, you're going to see that it's going to create a new folder and let me go ahead and go into vg underscore temp. So this is going to be very helpful because these are going to be all the IDs of the objects that we're going to be interacting with. So these right here is just going to be for unity type of debugging. So like I said, this is going to be very helpful when you start creating more, more interactions. So I'm going to open these with, let's actually open the whole thing with VS code. So we can get a, a good idea of what's going to be in that directory. So if we go ahead and maximize it, you're going to see that every object is going to have an OBJ and different values. I would assume that some of, some of those values are going to be values from the mesh. This file right here is very important. It's going to be for the scene. So what objects are available in this scene where we have virtual graphs interactions. So if you go in here, you're going to see this has, okay, what is going to be the sensor setup? And that's going to be the setup that we did in the, in the main, my grass game object. And then also a controller setup so we can see, okay, what is going to be the different settings that we set up, the graph selection. And again, if something didn't work because you set up the sensor one way, you can come into this file and find out, okay, what did you do wrong? If you look at the flashlight, this is the one that we set up in the beginning of the video. You can see that we have an ID. We also have a parent ID. We also have the, the join type. Remember, we added a VG underscore articulation. The type was floating. It also has a join center. It also has an axis, a position, rotation. I wanted to show you this because this is very helpful during, you know, during development so that you know what really it's happening and then go into resources. So it's going to be another thing that is really helpful to know that the database name, this is going to be the database name that is going to be safe after we prepare, we go through the, the baking process. 
This is gonna be the file, the, the name of the database name, so you can change it if you want to. I'm gonna leave it like that. And then the final thing is to prepare the project, right? This found 16 different objects. Uh, we haven't really gone through the baking process. Okay, so now we can hit okay and we can go ahead and click on create grass. All right guys, so everything just came down. It looks like everything finished. So let's see what happened behind the scenes before we test this. So if we go first to a streaming assets, let me go ahead and open this folder. I think sometimes I just have to show an explorer and then a streaming assets. Yep. And then if we go back in here, it's going to reload it. Just Unity didn't reload it. But if you notice, it's going to be the database file. And if I expand this a little bit here, you're going to see that there is a VG underscore grasp and also a graphs DB file that contains all the information that the actual service process and then save into our database in here. Okay, so we have our hands in here. Let's see if I can grab this and you can see, okay, we can grab that object. You can grab that object. And I don't, I'm going to try to get my fingers basically going through the, colli the colliders. Again, there's actually no based on colliders, based, based on mesh data. So this is based on the vertices on the mesh is no mesh is no basically using any of the you know the physics collider it, the physics part comes in handy when you start dropping things because now it's you know using the unit unity game engine physics to be able to you know do the physics so if i wanted to do this that is now happening with the you know with the rigid body that i added and the mesh collider so if i go ahead and drop it you can see that that works i can also grab this box i'm gonna put the box over there let me see if I can stack this. And some of these things are, okay. So when you have better poses and things like this and that are more accurate, right? If I wanted to grab this, it's a lot easier to interact with it in VR. So if I grab this and maybe we just toss that over there. And I have a couple of batteries in here, which are really, really small. And I'm gonna grab it with my two fingers, which is pretty impressive, right? Okay, let's try and see if I can grab it with different fingers. And I'm gonna try and see if I can grab it Okay, let me put it down and grab it. Let me try this with a flashlight, right? I'm gonna grab the flashlight from one side and also from the back. I am going to move it down. I'm gonna let it go on the left hand and things are just, just it just works really well. Okay, how about the water, right? I'm gonna bring the water here and then I'm gonna grab the battery. I'm gonna to toss that. Okay, let's see if I can toss that over there. Toss that over there. Okay, so that works. So, oh, we have a little radio here and a walkie talkie. Oh, let me grab that again. And you can see that, okay, so many different poses. And let's see if I can grab, okay, this is impressive. And I'm grabbing it from the antenna. Dif different grab motions. Okay, so, so, so far, really impressed. Let's go ahead and go into another station. Okay, so this one, I have a prismatic, which means that I can go from one position to, to the next. This is just another different type of articulation. And then this one is Revolut, right? And we can grab it here and I can go left and right, and things just work magically well. Okay, so this is the one that we set up. And okay, so that one doesn't work quite well. We'll debug it, that's okay. But you can see how I can go and rotate it, right? We can go, and I think it's because I didn't set the, the anchor point in this one. So it's anchoring to the middle. So, okay, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm glad that that happened. Let me hit play to stop it. And if I go into the scene view here, we can get back into this object. Okay, and let's see what I did wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the lock in here. And if you notice, I didn't set the anchor. So let's go ahead and set the anchor and we can hit save or changes. And then hit play and see if everything works. So let's see if I, okay, so that works really well. And I'm kind of colliding with my monitor, which is right in front of my face, but this is working well. And then this one works well. Okay, so we looked at all the different objects in there. This one also uses a Revolut, but it's, it's a different, I can use it with one hand. Let's try my left hand in here. Let's try to see if I can grab it in a different way. There we go, so that works. Okay, how about this one? Oh, this one's not moving, that's a bug. No, it's not a bug. I set it to be able to do it only with two hands. So that's super impressive. You can do some constraints, which they provide. This one, if I go and get close, you can see how it changes my finger. And I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna just go ahead and touch it. Oops, the light went off, line on, line off. Okay, so that's what I did on this one. This one, I also did a prismatic, and then you can just do something like that. But if I go back in here, lights on, lights off. Okay, so that's how that one works. Let's go ahead and look at some of these objects in here, which I did 
the graph strength. You can see I have 0 0.8903482. This is a flow value. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push this one, maybe grab this one. You can see different strength, right? If I get closer. Okay, so that one I have a number one because I am grabbing this object perfectly. How about if I grab it with two fingers? Okay, so this one is not grab all the way completely. So that is halfway, so 0 0.59. Let's just go ahead and toss that over there. And then how about this one? Okay, so that one I grab it perfectly. Okay, how about I grab it from the top? From, okay, maybe right here. Okay, let's grab it again. Okay, so see how that is going. This is really impressive. Okay, let me grab this big tank, this big O2. <laughs> and then see if I can grab it. Okay, there we go. And this is really gonna, you know, you need to make this look heavier, right? Change the physics. Because right now it just feels like it's another light uh, object. And we'll just toss it over there. Let's just make some mess. And then we can just grab this from a different position. And then get back into this one right here. So, and then I can also, also grab this. So as far as pricing, you can go to virtualgrass.com and then look at the different tiers that they provide. I'm going to be personally getting this because I want to keep doing prototypes. You, you can get the indie license for two months for free, and then it's going to be 10 euros per month. This is going to be only required during development. After development, you don't need to have a license, which is actually pretty helpful. And then this license has a constraint of making less than 100,000 euros in revenue per year. And then after that, you know, you can bump up and, and look at different licenses. And lastly, make sure that you look at Dilmer Virtual Grass SDK demos because they're going to contain everything that you need to get this project going. So that's everything for today. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.